Hello, everybody, and welcome to another game of StarCraft II. I am your host, Big Blue Firebat, and today we are going to be watching a match from the qualifier rounds of the GeForce Pro-Am StarCraft Tournament, featuring up here, spawning as the Orange Zerg, REQ Dark Cell, Requiem Esports Dark Cell, and his opponent, none other than Team Liquid's Rhett. And we already have Dark Cell starting off with a little bit of good sportsmanship, letting Rhett know that if his internet connection is just terrible and makes it very difficult for him to play, he is willing to reschedule the match. That is a fine gesture from him, not going to force Rhett to play in, uh, in a laggy situation. But as Rhett's saying, and I hope we feel the same way, that this game will not go to that, that this will be a good game with a low ping. I hope everybody has low pings out there in their good games. Moving on to the map, we have Taldorim Altar LE. This is a very interesting map, an extremely large macro style map. And this should be interesting in that this is a Zerg versus Zerg game. Zerg versus Zerg games tend to be very frantic, tend to not get into the late game very often. A lot of Banelings, a lot of Zerglings early on deciding the game. But Taldorim Altar is kind of designed to last into at least the mid game and often the late game with this extremely easy to take natural, this fairly easy to take third, and this rather easy to defend ramp over here and more importantly this map as i mentioned is enormous it takes forever for anything to get anywhere in particular these slow overlords Rhett has the bad luck of scouting in the cross wrong direction so that overlord is going to take forever to get across the map or i'm sorry dark cell scouted in the wrong direction Rhett is scouting in the correct direction so he will at least figure out where his opponent is before too long. He's even sending out his second Overlord here. But for the moment, both players playing in the dark. Rhett going for a, an Extractor and his spawning pool at the same time. Probably looking to get those early Speedlings out to take control of this large map. And uh, we see Dark Cell going for a later Extractor, a later pool, and his Hatchery first. So that's a very interesting play. I'm not sure how that's going to uh, do against Rhett's more aggressive opening style. Rhett is going to have the ability to supply more Zerglings faster and faster Zerglings faster. He'll be able to get that gas going. Zergling speed is already starting and we don't even have enough gas from uh, Dark Cell. We don't even have a spawning pool finish from Dark Cell for him to get his speedling research going or to build any, speed, any Zerglings slow or fast himself. On the plus side, if he can get this hatchery up and running, he will have an economic advantage over Rhett. And uh, that is something that Rhett is going to have to use his Zerglings aggressively in order to counteract, while at the same time setting himself up for a hatchery on his own. So this is going to be a battle of the builds. We have Rhett with the safer Zergling opening, and we have Dark Cell with the more risky economic opening. Depending on those drones, depending on the Queen coming out, and depending on these Zerglings to do some damage to Rhett's Zerglings. Already we got some action going down. Rhett is going to town on this hatchery, and if I have to say this is probably a mistake. He should be running into the main of Dark Cell and doing some damage to the drones, doing some damage to any freshly hatched Zerglings. This hatchery can take some damage. And basically, these Zerglings have done almost nothing. They did a little bit of damage to this hatchery, and now they are into the base. But Dark Cell has some Zerglings to defend for himself. He has a queen coming out, and he's going to maybe lose one drone. No, no drones going down, and I think that these Zerglings are going to be shoot away. But Red, for his part, is setting up a Baneling Nest back at his base. His Zergling speed is almost finished, so he'll be able to run circles around these uh, Zerglings from Dark Cell. And there they go. Speed is just kicking in, which is going to give Red a huge advantage, in particular taking advantage of Dark Cell's own creep to run all over the place at a blinding speed and this is what I was talking about Zerg matches early on are often a very twitchy style of gameplay you have to be reacting very quickly because the speedlings in particular speedlings on creep are just enormously fast but now we have Queens going down we have uh, enough Zerglings for Dark Cell to probably defend his natural and the hatchery took a little bit of damage but nothing that it can't handle Rhett is taking firm control of the map but we have dark cell placing his overlords in a very smart position he's going to be aware of what happens as it happens that is another um interesting part of zerg versus zerg play the overlords and the lack of strong early anti-air oh hold on hold the phone we have failings coming in going after these zerglings for dark cell and look at red's gonna and red's gonna take down one queen one Bailing getting a huge explosion off on these Zerglings. And here's another Bailing coming in. More Zerglings going down. Those Bailings definitely paying for themselves, killing a ton of Zerglings for our Dark Cell. And that is uh, going to be a big problem. We have Dark Cell morphing in Banelings of his own, and it looks like we have a good old-fashioned Zerg versus Zerg, Baneling versus Zergling micro fest, and it's just going to be a matter of who controls their Zergling and Banelings the best. 
Wow, it is going to be action-packed, and I think that um, I'm not going to be able to analyze anything else for this game because we have more coming in. Zerglings and Banelings blowing up on each other. And what I was saying before is that Overlords, placed throughout the map, allow Zerg players to react to each other very, very quickly. They don't have to wait until the Zerglings or Roaches or Banelings are on their front door. They can see what's coming, when it's coming, what tech is going in, and that makes for a very, very risky style of play if you're going for your economy because you know that your Zerg opponent is going for economy or units or whatever, and you can simply attack and end the game right there. But we have more aggression coming in from Rhett. We have Dark Cell doing his best to hold this off, not really getting much uh, use out of his expansion, but then again, neither is Rhett. Both players mostly using these hatcheries for their larva, and now we have Banelings navigating around. This Banelings from Dark Cell chasing around the Banelings, for the uh, Zerglings from Rhett, and Rhett deciding to kill four Zerglings to take out that one Baneling. Not a perfect trade, but better than losing every Zergling he has. And now we have Zerglings running around, and even a couple of Zerglings for Red going after this drone line. Dark Cell sacrificing one drone to take out those two Banelings. Good trade there, but every drone is going to count in this match. And now we have additional Zerglings flying around all over the place, chasing after these Zerglings from Dark Cell. And we just have quite a Zergling Baneling fest. This is typical Zerg versus Zerg. Very strong aggression, very high intensity early game. Tier 1 action, and now we have more Zerglings in, coming in for Dark Cell, but Dark Cell with all of these Zerglings coming in from Red, and these Banelings just barely morphing in, realizing that he is not going to be able to keep up. These Zerglings at any time can go in and kill almost every single drone that Dark Cell has. Huge game, very intense. Whew. Huge Microfest, and we can see there from the APM from both players. I didn't have a chance to check the tab during the game, but they are both flying on the APM, and that's what you get when you throw two Zerg pro-level players at each other, and we're going to move on to game two.